Factor v. Leiden, Wikipedia Audio Factor v. Leiden is a variant of human factor v, which causes an increase in blood clotting. With this mutation, the anticoagulant protein secreted is not able to bind normally to factor v, leading to a hypercoagulable state, i.e., an increased tendency for the patient to form abnormal and potentially harmful blood clots. Factor V. Leiden is the most common hereditary hypercoagulability disorder amongst ethnic Europeans. It is named after the Dutch city Leiden, where it was first identified in 1994 by Professor Arbertina E.T.L. Abnormal, Recurrent Venous Thromboses in the normal person, factor V functions as a cofactor to allow factor XA to activate prothrombin, resulting in the enzyme thrombin. Thrombin in turn cleaves fibrinogen to form fibrin, which polymerizes to form the dense meshwork that makes up the majority of a clot. Activated protein C is a natural anticoagulant that acts to limit the extent of clotting by cleaving and degrading factor V. Signs symptoms Factor V Leiden is an autosomal dominant genetic condition that exhibits incomplete penetrance, i.e. not every person who has the mutation develops the disease. The condition results in a factor V variant that cannot be as easily degraded by APC. The gene that codes the protein is referred to as F5. Mutation of this gene a single nucleotide polymorphism is located in X and 10. As a mesense substitution of base G to base A, it changes the protein S amino acid from arginine to glutamine. Depending on the chosen start the position of the nucleotide variant is either at position 1691 or 1746. It also affects the amino acid position for the variant, which is either 506 or 534. Since this amino acid is normally the cleavage site for APC, the mutation prevents efficient inactivation of factor V. When factor V remains active, it facilitates overproduction of thrombin leading to generation of excess fibrin and excess clotting. The excessive clotting that occurs in this disorder is almost always restricted to the veins, where the clotting may cause a deep vein thrombosis. If the venous clots break off, these clots can travel through the right side of the heart to the lung where they block a pulmonary blood vessel and cause a pulmonary embolism. It is extremely rare for this disorder to cause the formation of clots in arteries that can lead to stroke or heart attack, though a mini-stroke, known as a transient ischemic attack, is more common. Given that this disease displays incomplete dominance, those who are homozygous for the mutated allele are at a heightened risk for the events detailed above versus those that are heterozygous for the mutation. Suspicion of factor V. Leiden being the cause for any thrombotic event should be considered in any Caucasian patient below the age of 45, or in any person with a family history of venous thrombosis. There are a few different methods by which this condition can be diagnosed. Most laboratories screen at-risk patients with either a snake venom-based test or an APTT-based test. In both methods, the time it takes for blood to clot is decreased in the presence of the factor V. Leiden mutation. This is done by running two tests simultaneously. One test is run in the presence of activated protein C and the other, in the absence. A ratio is determined based on the two tests and the results signify to the laboratory whether APC is working or not. There is also a genetic test that can be done for this disorder. The mutation removes a cleavage site of the restriction endonuclease MNLI, so PCR treatment with MNLI, and then DNA electrophoresis will give a diagnosis. 
Other PCR-based assays such as IPLEX can also identify zygocyte and frequency of the variant. As there is no cure, treatment is focused on prevention of thrombotic complications by counseling. In addition, temporary treatment with an anticoagulant may be required during periods of particularly high risk of thrombosis, such as major surgery. Studies have found that about 5% of Caucasians in North America have factor V Leiden. Data have indicated that prevalence of factor V Leiden is greater among Caucasians than minority Americans. One study also suggested that the factor V Leiden mutation segregates in populations with significant Caucasian admixture and is rare in genetically distant non European groups. Up to 30% of patients who present with deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism have this condition. The risk of developing a clot in a blood vessel depends on whether a person inherits one or two copies of the factor V Leiden mutation. Inheriting one copy of the mutation from a parent increases by fourfold to eightfold the chance of developing a clot. People who inherit two copies of the mutation, one from each parent, may have up to 80 times the usual risk of developing this type of blood clot. Considering that the risk of developing an abnormal blood clot averages about 1 in 1,000 per year in the general population, the presence of one copy of the factor V Leiden mutation increases that risk to between 4 in 1,000 to 8 in 1,000. Having two copies of the mutation may raise the risk as high as 80 in 1,000. It is unclear whether these individuals are at increased risk for recurrent venous thrombosis. While only 1% of people with factor V Leiden have two copies of the defective gene, these homozygous individuals have a more severe clinical condition. The presence of acquired risk factors for venous thrombosis including smoking, use of estrogen-containing forms of hormonal contraception, and recent surgery further increase the chance that an individual with the factor V Leiden mutation will develop DVT. Women with factor V Leiden have a substantially increased risk of clotting in pregnancy in the form of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. They also may have a small increased risk of preeclampsia, may have a small increased risk of low birth weight babies, may have a small increased risk of miscarriage and stillbirth due to either clotting in the placenta, umbilical cord, or the fetus or influences the clotting system may have on placental development. Note that many of these women go through one or more pregnancies with no difficulties while others may repeatedly have pregnancy complications, and still others may develop clots within weeks of becoming pregnant. Pathophysiology Diagnosis Treatment Epidemiology